This is going to be the history of River of Time as I know it. Now, I'm not a newbie. I was five years into the program before I got started, so th those years I had to go search out a little bit. And up there on the right, that is the first program book that indicates the first annual River of Time in 1991. But the concept started in 1990 at the Bay, Ken Bay City Democrat Press, where Dan Chapman, Diane Rosselin, Scott and Carol DeVoe, Jim Martin, and some other reenactors considered what they wanted to present, and River of Time became a reality. There is a letter dated May of 1991 addressed to Mr. Don Feltsky of the Bay County Community Center requesting that the community center waive the fee for the rental of the community center and uh, for an, a new event called the uh, River of Time, which was a living historical reenactment. One member even joked that going out in time as far as the future as Star Trek. Now, having said that, we've done some investigation. There is such a thing as a demo space capsule. And if any of you here have a spare $6,000, we can make that happen. I'm just saying. Now, Dan Chapman, in this picture up here on the right, in the kilt, that's Dan Chapman from 1991, and the gentleman on the left is Scott Cummings, and he's a Civil War soldier, and this is 1991. <clears throat> and the other picture is uh, Scott Cummings and his unit, the 3rd Michigan, from 1991. Kathy Speakerman, who has been at every River of Time as a Civil War civilian indicated that River of Time was intended to be a Civil War only reenactment and not the multiple timeline you see today. There'll be more on that in a minute. These 1994 pictures show teepees and mountains, mountain men set up between the log cabin and the daycare center. There was also Civil War units that presented uh, battles with multiple cannons. One cannon was a group called Bledsoe's Battery, and that featured four cannons which would fire over the Saginaw River. The cannon bounty is, is like a rental that you pay for each cannon. Cannon bounty for a large cannon is $500, and for a small cannon it is $300. Bledsoe's battery had two of each. Their bounty would have been $1,600. Our current cannon is from a group called Hudson's Battery. They have one, can one cannon, and that bounty is 250 so that's why we have one cannon. And in those pictures there, that's what you see, is the teepees and then uh, just some Civil War things going on there in that picture. The Tromley House. Note that the Tromley House driveway is undeveloped and there's no split rail fence around the front of the house. Notice also that there's not a lot of visitors or food vendors or reenactors in that area. That comes later. My understanding is that from 1991 to 1995, the museum was not involved in the reenactment. The reenactors themselves presented the event. But once the reenactment really started growing, reenactors found it difficult to reenact and set up the event. What to do? Reenactors approached the Bay County Historical Society and a partnership was formed. Reenactors let the, re uh, let the River of Time Committee and non-reenactors like myself administer and set up the event. The Bay County Historical Society provided in-kind accounting, media services, and related services as needed. River of Time is responsible for its own fundraising. We rely on public donations during the event, as well as having a fundraiser breakfast and <coughs> 1940s concert at State Theater. The reenactor numbers also began to increase. The 
the bottom picture shows a whole unit of Yankees marching off to battle. That's there in front of the Tromley House. That line of dark is uh, Yankee soldiers. And the other picture shows Civil War tents where reenactors live for three days. Now, I was secretary, as Miss Judy said, uh, for the fireworks festival for 13 years. And when I left the festival in 1996, I decided to get involved with River of Time. Besides, I had a colonial dress that I got at the Salvation Army that I could wear. And I, I think it was Halloween costume. My first job was a three-hour position in an information booth um, where I was three hours on Saturday, three hours on Sunday. That was 1996. 1997, I was made a booth captain where it meant you were in the information booth the whole day, both days. We had three information booths at that time. There was one that was on the north side of the Davison Slip one that was at the Arboretum at the Cancellor uh, Gate directly located across from the Bay County Community Center. And the north, the north gate was at the Davis and Slip footbridge and the south gate was way down at Fitness Park. And here is a picture of our opening ceremonies. This is in 2002 and that's where we had it. You can see behind is that bridge that you walk across for the, the ship graveyard. And that's where we had our opening and closing ceremonies. Also in the other picture, President and Mrs. Lincoln, and the other picture is Civil War soldiers at ease uh, in the Arboretum area. After 1997, I was volunteer coordinator and got all the volunteers for setup and tear down and everything in between. I then would, uh, I was then went from volunteer coordinator to vice chair. River of Time continued to grow in the 2000s. We had a change in time periods. Native Americans decreased. Colonial voyagers, that was French and Indian mountain men. Civil War continued to grow and World War I and World War II began to come in and appear. River of Time is truly like a river changing with the reenactor flow. The River of Time encampment stretched further south from the Trombley House. As I said, the opening and closing ceremonies took place in the Arboretum by the ship graveyard display. Colonials and Civil War units actually camped in the Arboretum area. And this was before the Garden Club began to develop the Arboretum. And Bay County had fewer sprinklers in that area. The city asked the event to move further south after heavy rains one year resulted in deep ruts in the Arboretum, ruining parts of the park, not to mention the burned rock. Insurance covered the rut repairs and the burn rock remained in place until it was removed from the park during improvements in later years. Food vendors would set up on the north side of the Davison Slip and that was the original north boundary. During the River of Time 25th anniversary, key volunteer leaders posed for this picture. Terry Wagger and Virginia Hunter are pictured in the picture. Other chairpersons included Robin Devereaux and Scott DeVoe. The Rostelins, uh, they are on the far, uh, be my right, the lady in the turquoise and the gentleman behind her, they are Civil War musicians. The gentleman in the back row with the blue shirt, that's John Blizzard, he's with the Sanford Brigade. Ron O'Glothlin, is Ron. he's also next to John on this side with the hat and he was our newspaper editor for a long time and our very own Dee Dee Waxman is in the front row and she has done uh, Amelia Bloomer and Annie Edson Taylor. Ken Hoard is the gentleman in the red jacket and Randy George <laughs> is but right by Ken by Ken, and he was an early reenactor, and he also was on our fundraising committee. I was vice chair when Terry was chair. Terry handled the administrative items and worked with the reenactors. Not always an easy task. 
As vice chair, I worked on the logistics of the, vi of the event. Logistically at that time, the city of Bay City uh, would put up the fencing, would get the Porter Johns and set up other items. River of Time organizers arranged for wood, water, straw, and the reenactors as needed uh, as well. And the reenactors they needed as well, they would hire first persons like President Lincoln. This dedicated group of volunteers is the lifeblood of River of Time, and I'm grateful for every one of them. After the city of Bay City encouraged River of Time to move south, the new boundary became the Tromley House driveway, and that is now the main entry gate today. Students come down Tromley House driveway to see River of Time, and students listen to a World War II reenactor. <laughs> Education Day is River of Time's most value reward for our reenactors. Our general store features our annual t-shirt, cider and donuts, and various sundries. Mrs. Turbin is the provider and does a good business for River of Time. The general store used to be set up on the log cabin porch and Mrs. Turbin would store items to in the log cabin during the event. The log cabin used to be open to the public viewing in the 90s and early 2000s. The Kiwanis Club took care of the log cabin until they were no longer able to do so. While River of Time is free to the public, the event cost $18,000 to put on. Did I mention that we accept donations and we have sponsorships available? Just saying. New features. Keeping it fresh. Keeping River of Time fresh is challenging. People always ask, what's new? And I always say, nothing is new, it's history, you can't change it. But we do try to give our visitors something new to see, new scenarios. One of our most popular ones was the Christian Cowboys. These reenactors came in several buses and set up a western town. Their most popular presentation was the gunfight at the OK Corral. And here are some of the pictures from that gunfight. Another scenario the Cowboys would present was Billy the Kid and Sheriff Pat Garrett. And I always thought that it was kind of fun and interesting that Billy and Billy the Kid was reenacted by one of our local Bay City policemen. One hit wonders. Two reenactors came up with the idea of a magic show. The two gentlemen performed various sleights of hand, but the show highlight included getting out of the locked trunk that's in the picture, if you see it there, uh, that trunk, and the, and the other uh, highlight was catching a bullet in one of the reenactor's mouth. One performer actually fired a period pistol at the other performer who caught the bullet in his mouth. I found out later how they really did it. The magic show only occurred in 2007 but it was very popular that year. Now, the Silver Tent. In the young years of River of Time, we featured an education tent in addition to our Friday Education Day. The tent showcased various first persons from different time periods like David Thompson, Peter Pond, and even entertainers like Gino Picor. The single gentleman in the picture is Peter Pond, and he was a voyager and an early Michigan explorer. <clears throat> the group picture is Gino Picor showing this group of ladies how to do the French version of the hokey pokey. The education tent at that time was a large silver tent, as you can tell by its shininess. River of Time organizers were told by our reenactors that that was a nun, that that was a nun period of tent and it was offensive at the event, so we had to stop using it. I did notice that the reenactors did not seem to mind the tent when it rained. 
I am happy to say that we are bringing back the education tent this year and it is period correct. We are going to be featuring two presentations each day and Eric Jaila is going to be at the tent each day doing a presentation. One will be on logging in Bay County and I believe that will be on Sunday and on Saturday we're going to have a presentation that's called things that go bump in the night. So that's going to be at our education tent this year. Around 2010, the City of Bay City began to require event organizers to set up their own fencing, set their own dumpster in place for event trash, and provide their own porta johns. City overtime costs were getting unbearable and event organizers absorbed these responsibilities and set up uh, costs themselves. The face of some events began to change because they had to. River of Time was challenged to find volunteers to set up four trailer loads of fence to enclose the event as it is today. Fencing needs to be installed to secure the reenactor's gear and they sleep better at night. Reenactors gear is costly. Reenacting is an investment and a passion. President Lincoln's hat is $300. River of Time, the education tent that we are going to be using was $1,000. A Civil War soldier's officer's uniform is $1,000. If you add a rifle and a sword and a pistol, that will be another $1,000. I have never asked the gentleman up here on the right, that is General Bedford Forrest, his Williams gun, I've never asked him how much that cost. I was afraid to. Things you will see at River of Time. From 2010 to 2016, River of Time logistics <coughs> remained pretty pretty much constant, but the presentations do change. Music groups have come and gone, but there will always be a dulcimer sound, bagpipes, and fife and drum. The Titabawasi fife and drum have only missed one river of time, and they play for our opening and closing ceremonies. They do a concert, and they never seem to stop parading around. Now, the Kuhlmans were our dulcimer group for years, but they finally stopped attending when they reached their 90s. They were like 91, 92, and they find that maybe it was time to slow down a little bit. Now we have the Jolly Hammers dulcimer group. We have had a hurdy-gurdy man, a singing voyager, Gino Bacor, we saw him earlier, Civil War period music, and Native American chanting. The gentleman up in the corner there, that's a hurdy-gurdy man. Okay, battles and smoke. In the 90s and in the early 2000s, River of Time has a bigger Civil War presence. There were multiple cannons and large military units. Civil War units decreased, while Native American and Voyager units increased and colonial units remained stable. Here are some pictures of battles over the life of River of Time. Reenactors will tell you that it is easy to get a photo of smoke because you jump when you hear the boom and you automatically take the picture. It's happened to me many times. That's how I got these pictures. There's some more. There's the cannon firing. And the other one is a voyager, and he is also participating in a battle. First persons. First persons are reenactors who portray a real historical figure, like President Lincoln. Imagine the only president I'm on a first name basis with has been dead for 150 years. My luck. We have had Father Marquette, General Bedford Forrest, and General Grant. We currently have President Lincoln and Benjamin Franklin. Many of the ranking military officers are first persons that you see at River of Time. 
but you would need to ask them who they are portraying. Our flyover and river battle. In 2012, we were contacted by about a World War II flyover. You can bet we said yes to the Saginaw Valley Air Museum. The number of planes vary each year depending on what pilots are available, but it is impressive to see these planes. And I love it because you hear them coming before you actually see them. And, and you know, it's a very distinctive sound, and you know they're coming. I love the smoke tails. We started also a river battle in the early years, and it has changed as well. The Bay Sail Appledore comes down the river on Saturday about 3 o'clock with soldiers on board. We actually have Civil War soldiers that go and board the sailboat. And they uh, are going to be attacking the military land units. Originally, the ceremony or the, the scenario was Civil War only. But over the years, you will see mountain men, voyagers, Buffalo soldiers, World War II soldiers, and Civil War cannon all taking part in the battle. Who can resist taking a pot shot at the enemy? For a few years, we also had a steamboat, and the voyagers also had a canoe that had a small cannon on it, and that would be involved in the battle as well. And that's this picture here. Uh, if you look in front of the apple door, that smaller boat is the steamboat. Earlier I said that River of Time food vendors were located at the north side of the Davison Slip. There were eight, six to eight vendors in addition to the root beer and kettle corn that were actually in the park itself. Food vendors complained, as food vendors like to do, that there were too many vendors as no one was making a decent profit. So we cut back the number of food vendors and moved them closer to the event. We have had a modern vendor, a pizza vendor. One year, Meats and More sold turkey legs. Currently, we have a hot dog vendor, our own River of Time vendor, Little John's Root Beer and Ma and Pa Kettle Corn. The Root Beer and the Kettle Corn have been with River of Time since day one. Reenactors used to offer samples of their food to the public until the health department said you couldn't do that. But I will tell you this, the soup that comes out of those kettles are the best soup I have ever had. It was awesome. It was the Mormon camp. Sadly, they're not with us anymore, but that lady could cook one amazing batch of soup. In 2005, a local Girl Scout group asked if they could be part of River of Time. The group had 1940 and 1950 uniforms and tents. We let them set up. The display was so popular, the Scouts have been with us ever since. The troop started out with girl troops, with Girl Scouts. The Scout Master changed and then we had Boy Scouts. The troop changed again in 2016 and 2017 and currently we're back to Girl Scouts. If that's why you see the various colors of tents, those are the different decades of Girl Scouts and Scout tents. The bookmobile was a longtime favorite at River of Time until the rains came one year. The bus became bogged down in the mud when it would try to drive out of the park and buried, it, buried the axle, and buried it up to the axles. Mike's towing had to send the super wrecker to pull it out. River of Time did not have a bookmobile for a few years. And then in 2016, the book bike appeared. The bike unfolds into a mini library on information and books to match the occasion. And you are able to ride the bike when it is folded up and secured. And that's what you have here. Uh, that's the bookmobile on, on this side. And the other picture here, that's what the uh, book bike looks like when it's unfolded. Weddings. 
all these weddings are legitimate and were performed by ordained ministers at River of Time over the years. The bride and groom in the colonial wedding, they were not reenactors, but the best man was a reenactor and the pastor that married them was, uh, is also a reenactor. That's this picture here with the rifles up. Mrs. Lincoln attended the Civil War wedding and spoke with the pastor. The, that's Mrs. Lincoln with the blue dress and the bride is over on the far side in the white dress. And the bride is at the, le at the left. How many folks can say Mrs. Lincoln came to my wedding? <laughs> the bride and groom in the Voyager wedding were wrapped in a white blanket during the ceremony to symbolize purity. The bride and groom actually met at River of Time. They were both reenactors and they are members of the Samford Brigade. Reenactors do have a sense of humor. Occasionally, reenactors will poke fun of the time period they are in. The grave is a British general and was in the Native American camp. Don't upset a native. The last change for River of Time came in 2016 when the city of Bay City enforced new boundary lines for River of Time. An area was no longer available for camping and had to be marked off. A River of Time volunteer decided to have some fun and created the Mason-Dixon line. Reenactors are asked many questions and some of the questions are common to all encampments. And one of those questions are, is that a real fire? <laughs> I did not believe that until I heard it at River of Time with my own ears. <coughs> so it does happen. Which leads to the big question, why is there a River of Time? Let me say this, peas, porridge, hot, peas, porridge, cold, peas, porridge in the pot, nine days old. That is not just a nursery rhyme. That is a recipe from the colonial period. When the soldiers were out in a battle, soldiers would make peas porridge. And when the porridge got low, they would throw in more peas for a number of days. Let's say nine days. I have had peas porridge at River of Time. And I can tell you, we would have won the war in a week if we had fed it to the enemy. <laughs> <laughs> Where else will you learn about peas porridge except at River of Time? It will not be in a history book, but you will learn memorable history at River of Time. Thank you. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. I'm, I'm not a reenactor myself, but I can answer logistical questions and there are, I, I, I know that much. Yes? I have a question about the tents. Does River of Time set those tents up or is everybody responsible for their own? Everyone is responsible for their own. That's why I say that reenacting is so expensive. Everything that you see there, they bring themselves. They come in with U-Hauls and they set them up. They set up on uh, River of Time. We have our education day on Thursday, open to the public Saturday and Sunday. They come in on uh, Thursday and they set up. We set up the fencing on Wednesday so they can come in on Thursday. Uh, there's a gentleman, he's a little older now, so he reenacts uh, a Vietnam veteran and so he doesn't have to haul as much stuff. But he used to reenact a Civil War officer and he was the officer that would supply the food for the camps. One of the things that I learned uh, at River of Time is that in the Civil War, military officers would oftentimes or could bring their families with them in the battles. They would go around with them. 
this gentleman had an octagon tent. And I was doing something, and I was getting tired one afternoon, and I went by his tent, and I said, Gary, can I rest for just a second? I just got to put my feet up. He says, sure, go into the tent, and I'll tell everybody you went the other way. And I said, fine. I walk into the tent. There is a carpet on the grass. There's a four-poster bed. There is a table and chair. There's a rocking chair, and there's a high boy with a uh, pitcher and water for washing. I rest, I come out, and I said, Gary, where did you get all of those items? From my basement. I said, no, 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 no. Where did you get all of those items? He said, from my basement. I said, you're telling me you took all that stuff, hauled it up out of your basement. You see, I ran a U-Haul. I said, you put it in the U-Haul. You come here. You set it up. The event's done. You put it back in the U-Haul, and then you haul it home and put it back in your basement. He goes, yeah. So that's why I don't reenact. My theory is if you can't reenact out of a suitcase, it is not happening. But that's what these people do. This is the level they will go to to present history and to educate the public. Do not be afraid to ask them any kind of question. They know. I will take an answer from a reenactor before a history book anytime. They really study it. They really do. They know everything that you would ever possibly want to know. Things that I have learned. Uh, there is one thing in the Voyager camp, mountaineers, well, Voyagers. In those time periods, there were no zippers. There weren't even buttons yet. All they had was strings that they would thread through your skirt. So you would have what they called a pocket. And the pocket was on the outside. It was a separate piece. It tied around the waist. And so you had this pocket. First of all, you had your everyday work pocket, but then you had an embroidered pocket that you wore on very special occasions. The other thing that I learned was the pocket was positioned differently. If the pocket was on your right side, it could mean that you were single. If your pocket was on your left side, it meant you were a widow. If your pocket was in the center, it meant you were married. There was, those are the kinds of things that you can learn at River of Time. This year's River of Time is September 28, 29, and 30. 28 is going to be our education day on Friday. You are welcome to come on that day, if you don't mind, 2,000 students. And I'm not joking, we had 2,000 students in the last couple years. It's uh, our highest numbers. We're very excited about that. Uh, open to the public Saturday and Sunday. Uh, so please join us. Uh, as I always say about River of Time, there will be weather. <laughs> Just so you know, there will be weather. Shiloh was not called on account of rain, the Battle of Shiloh. So be prepared. If it's cool, come dress in, I always tell people dress in layers. If it looks cloudy, bring an umbrella. Don't not come, please come. These reenactors will be there, and they would love to see you. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah, um, Jan, I just visited the new military museum on the corner of Center in Washington, which is really nice to see. But something you might want to tie in, and this year is the 100th anniversary of World War I, and they're going to have special ceremonies so you might want to tie in with that because there's a lot of veterans in town that would, I'm sure would like to come and see some of those things. That is an excellent suggestion. I thank you for that. We're going to be meeting in a couple of weeks as a committee, and I will definitely bring that up. Uh, I know the gentleman you're talking about, he has had displays at River of Time in the past. So that might be a very good idea to maybe bring something like that down there. Thank you very much for that. Anything else? If not, I thank you for your time. <laughs>